square bowls. I have done this demo, ugh, I don't know, three or four years ago, maybe five years ago. Um, and Roger said he'd like to see it again. So I was glad to be able to put something together and uh, be able to show you. What I have are some pieces that I've done. Um, they're all basically the same shape, uh, but I've done them with different sizes and different woods. So I'll pass those around first and as I'm demoing, you can uh, look at them. The piece of wood that I got, it was two inches thick, a little less than two inches thick. And it was about two inches longer than what this is. Then it was 110 bucks plus shipping. Gold wood is very, very expensive. But it really is nice. It turns about like walnut. What do you sell that? And it's good wood to work with. And if you screw something up, it makes nice firewood. So. Very porous too. <laughs> but anyway, this piece is. I forget. I think it's about nine. Yeah, this one's nine and a half inches square. What I have found is the easiest way to turn these, and they're they're pretty simple. Um, you start with a screw chuck. I, I, I like using screw chucks uh, because they hold well and they're just easy to use. Um, put the screw chuck hole on the, what you want to be the top side of the bowl so that then you can turn the bottom side first and then we're going to use a glue block on the bottom side to turn that around, put it in the chuck and turn the bowl, bowl shape. Okay? So I'm going to mount this on the screw chuck yeah. Make sure this thing's in tight first. Good and tight. Typical screw chuck holes are 3 eighths of an inch. I use an 11 30 seconds to make it a little bit tighter fit. This cherry is a piece of greenwood cherry that's Mm, I captured it last summer, I guess, so it's, it's fairly dry. There's probably a little bit of moisture to it. I didn't measure it, but there's some moisture to it. Typical bowl gouge is all you need to start with. What we're going to do is shape this bowl just like you see those where it's going to be thicker here and it's going to come up like this. So you have a nice continuous curve when you look down the bottom of the bowl. Right now this thing is all jaggy on the bottom. <clears throat> If you've turned nothing but round pieces, round bowls, round whatevers, the natural inclination, at least for me was, and I'm sure it's for most people, is when you turn the lathe on or turn it off, sometimes you put your hand on the piece. Don't do that. <laughs> All fleshy parts, your arm, your fingers, your hand, this side of the tool rest. Don't get them over here. Because all you gotta do is make one contact with one of these corners coming around and you're going to get the nickname of stubby, I believe you. It hurts. It really hurts. So be very, very conscious about the fact that your hands, your arms, everything need to be on this side of the tool rest. Also, wear a shield.
you'll start to get some tear out on these two corners in the beginning. But as you remove some material and this slope starts to get a little steeper, that tear out will go away. So don't be too concerned about getting the tear out here. It'll usually be this corner and this corner. Is there a reason for that? Though? It's just the way the grain's oriented and it, it's just, you know, it's, it's the, the straight grain's coming this way and it just comes off. Um, now, if you wanted to, you could protect this edge and this edge by gluing, uh, you know, a thin strip of wood on here if you wanted to. But you don't really need to because any, any little pieces of, or marks of tear out here, you can always sand them away anyway when we're done. So I'm, all I'm saying is don't be too concerned if it starts to happen. I like to keep my tool rest as close as I can to the piece. Another, another word of help, I'm always cutting with this first 25% of the, of the gouge, right up in here. Matt? Is, um, is there a difference for whether or not you're using a push cut you're cutting into? Yes. What about using a pull cut pulling out? I, you'll, you'll see me doing that too. Okay. Would you use it at this stage or not? Or why? You can use it. Okay. I'll, uh, in fact, I can do that now. Yeah, basically all, all I'm doing right now is just getting this piece of wood flat. Because right here you can see it's, there's chainsaw marks in that, that much of the wood. Okay. Good, good question. Uh, the lathe quite often just to take a look and see what what's what's happening if there's anything weird happening as far as grain tear out or anything this this is a piece of cherry that's working just beautiful but I've got still got chainsaw marks here and I've got a little bit in the center there that I've got to clean up so that it's nice and smooth I have a stop collar that I put on all of my tool rests so that it's set for a 5 8 gouge height. If, I, if I've got a half inch gouge or a 3 8 gouge, then I, I've got to raise it up a little bit. But I know that when I drop that tool rest down there, drop it all the way down to that, that stop collar, it's at the right height. I don't ever have to, to uh, adjust it. Just, tool rest pardon? <laughs> I 
I'm going to take a scraper and just scrape. This, by the way, is a Ray Key scraper that I've kind of reconfigured just a little bit. When you buy these, the point is, is in the center so that you've got both left and right that you can use. This one, I've, I've configured it so that um, I'm doing mostly left side because you're doing, I like to do the inside of a bowl with it. But what I'm doing here is just getting this nice and flat because I'm going to put a glue block on it later. But what I want to do is put a registration mark there where the center is. Don't really need to. Should have taken this out to begin with so you don't get wood turner's elbow. <coughs> block on this on this uh, uh, bottom side and what I'm doing here is taking a compass to measure what the diameter is or what the radius is and I'm just going to put a pencil line on here so that I know not to get inside of that and we'll finish turning this registration mark is wobbling on me and I don't like it. Unless these centers are centered up. Okay, well we'll just have to get around it. I like to raise this part up just a little bit. Uh, in other words, bringing bringing the slope from about here up so there's a little bit of a foot that this rests on. Just like those pieces I passed around to you, there's like a little bit of foot. It raises it up off the table or wherever it's sitting to make it look a little taller, a little higher, like some of the things that Betty showed us yesterday. Uh, yes? How do you decide the diameter of that foot? This foot? Yeah. Basically, it's the size of whatever my glue block is, or it's going to be slightly a little bit bigger. I, it doesn't need to be very big. You know, I mean, you don't need it out here. Um, so I'll make it, uh, you know, it'll be about where this circle is, the pencil circle is. And, th and these are about two to two and an eighth of an inch, somewhere two, two and a quarter. I have some extra of these glue blocks too, if any of you want some or need some or haven't used them and would like to, um, I'll give them away to you. I've got, I think I brought about four or five.
Comfortable for you. This is around 500. Sometimes I turn them a little faster, but now one of the things you want to do is you don't want this curvature to go all the way up to the top here. So I try to leave about uh, three eighths of an inch thereabouts, or maybe a little less. So I put a little mark on there just to see because these will come out evenly so you just need to mark one to see where you are because when we turn this other side you're going to do very little turning here other than just just a little bit and most of your turning is going to be down in this part here to get a curve that is a continuous curve so th these very points here once you turn this bottom side you really won't be turning much on there afterwards. to my pencil mark yet, but you could stop anywhere from here up to where my pencil mark is and it'd be just fine. It's just a matter of how tight you want it to look. Uh, this one is a fairly flat bowl. It's uh, less than a two inch piece of wood that I started with, so um, it wouldn't hurt to, you know, bring this up a little tighter. And this, I've got a high spot here, and I need to bring the foot up just a little bit. pretty good tear up right there. Again, don't worry about this because what I do at this point, and I won't do it here because we don't do any sanding, I take my five inch uh, orbital sander and I'll sand this. And you can sand, you'd be amazed how much of this you can sand out. It really disappears because first of all you don't want any sharp edges here. Uh, this you haven't, we haven't worked on the front side so we'll sand that later. But the bottom side here any of these corners or any of these edges, you want to round them off. Just like when you do flat work. You don't want to have a sharp edge on a tabletop 
first thing that hits it, it's going to put a nick in it. If you round them off a little bit, they're less likely to get damaged by bumping. And they feel better too. So at this point, I would sand. Uh, after I do one thing, and that is from here to here, I will scrape just to get rid of some of these high spots and not have to do so much sanding. But you'd be surprised on these, you can get rid of a lot of this just by sanding. I don't like going out here where the interrupted cut portion of, of, of the bowl is because you can get a snag on there if, you, if you're not careful. The best thing to do is do these as best you can with the gouge. Uh, don't scrape out here and just rely on sanding to get this smooth. Yeah? Um, do you sand with the piece moving or...? No. Stationary. You don't want to sand with this turning because you're going to get something grabbing onto here and you, you, it'll be a mess. Uh, always sand these stationary, but that's a good question. What do you sand with? Like Start with 80, 80, 80 and uh, the, uh, an orbital sander. I have a, a, like a DeWalt uh, orbital sander, 5 inch orbital sander, disc sander. Start with 80, 120, 180, 220. 220 is about as far as I go. Okay. So now we've got the bottom fairly well secured. I like using glue blocks. I use them all the time. Don't be afraid of them. The only thing you need to be afraid of when you're using glue blocks is if your CA glue has gotten old. Once the CA glue is about a year old or more, it tends to lose its strength. It also loses its reaction time with the accelerator. Uh, I made that mistake. I had, well, I got some at the last, uh, the AAW symposium I went to in Minneapolis, and the guy had a two for one special, so I thought, oh shoot, I'm gonna save a lot of money here. Mm -hmm. And so I got two 16 ounce jars of the thick, and, or the medium thick, and two 16 ounce of the medium thick, <laughs> or the thin, and it was way too much. Um, and I, I, I wound up throwing one of the thin and one of the thick away because they, were, they got so old, it was like a year and a half old and it, it, the stuff just wasn't holding. So don't use old CA glue. Now some people say you can store this in a refrigerator. I wouldn't store it in a refrigerator that I was having had food in. So if I stored it in, in a refrigerator, I would store it inside of another container, like two containers. Because this stuff is a little bit wicked. What I do with the CA, some people like to, I have these glue blocks configured in such a way so that this part here is concave, so that the only part that's touching the bottom of the bowl is this about three eighths of an inch on the outside here. I don't coat that entire area. You can if you want to. It doesn't hurt anything, but you really don't need to. And I'm using the medium thick and all I do is put about a fingernail size area on four places. Spray that with some accelerator. Use tailstock to bring that up so it can wind up. And just put a minimal amount of pressure on it. Doesn't need to be much. Now, the other thing you want to do is you're going to get some squeeze out. You can see right here, I got a little bit of squeeze out. Make sure you put some accelerator on that because if you don't, you're going to wind up with your face shield. Uh, splattered with CA glue and even worse if you got it in your eye. So always make sure you do the outside just a little bit so that that isn't uh, wet. Um, 
need to let this sit just a little bit. Anybody have any questions about what we've done so far? Yeah, I've had a couple. Yeah, it, it's it's no big deal. It, it it really isn't. If it's done properly, it shouldn't. Uh... Yeah, I but I and I know why. The, the the couple that I've had come off is when my glue is getting old. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now some people have used the hot glue. Hot glue works too. I don't trust it as much, uh, but it does work. I've used hot glue and it and it works just fine. Um, it, it's uh, and some people use like uh, regular. Uh, PVA glue too. The problem with that is you got to let it sit overnight yeah. or even longer to make sure it's good and dry. Tight bond is PVA. Do you make sure you use light cuts? Pardon? Do you make sure you never take a heavy cut? On these? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you don't want to take a real. You don't want to be trying to hog this off in like two minutes. That's why I was taking some time because you've got exposed edges here and you've got an interrupted cut from you know. From here out, this part, it yeah, starts I mean, to get. For the glue block too, right? For the glue block. Oh, with the glue block. Um, eh, no, you can take some heavy cuts with the glue block. Really, it's not too bad. They hold. All right, we'll give this a try. See what happens. <laughs> uh, would you true before you take that off? Would you true up that that glue block first? Well, you know. You're a good straight man, Matt. <laughs> because that is a good idea. And, and I think we've got a problem here with centers on something. Yeah, um, it is a... Because it's off. And the way, way you can do that... That's a lesson I learned the hard way, Chris. Yeah, you're right. Set your tool rest as tight in as you can. Yes. And this this is a, th a uh, detail gouge that I, I can uh, easily do a tenon with. Typically, I do a tenon. See how much that's off? And then there's something not right with the way the centers are matching up because I was right on the line that I had made. I don't think I've ever had one that far off. Thanks, Matt, you saved me on that one. I owe you. <laughs> I'm sure I owe you for stuff. Nah, I don't worry about it. <laughs> now. Oh. Yeah, that's on our old log one all over. Yeah. Take out the screw chuck. You think the live center is out of adjustment with the headstock? Yeah. Not equal. Not equal. I don't think anyway. I don't know why else. I've never had one flop around though, where the line flops around like that. But we can take a look at it later after we're done. Now what we're going to do is do the bowl on the top. What I like to do is leave on this, this edge here about mm, maybe an inch. So what I'll do is just draw a, kind of a flimsy pencil line. And then I'm going to draw a second line just about uh, less than a quarter of an inch in from there. That gives me that raised rim that that was on those pieces, that'll be the raised rim part. The raised rim gives a lot of depth to the bowl. You could just turn this flat and turn a bowl if you wanted to, but if you bite, by raising the rim a little bit, it gives you a whole different concept of what the bowl looks like.
Once again, bowl gouge. What I used to do uh, when I first started doing these, at this point I took, I have a, a half inch drill with a Morse taper that I, I would just throw it in my tailstock and bring it up and mark on here about an inch and a half or so depth and, and drill a depth hole in the center. Because this screw chuck hole is only about three quarters of an inch long so it, it's not a good depth hole. Um, but you can also just eyeball it too, it doesn't matter. Get out close to this first line. Uh, the face of this is not quite even, so I'm getting a little bit of a skip cut where I'm not cutting much here, but I'm cutting a lot here. What you want to be careful of so you don't get a backward skate is just to be very careful when you approach that line to get yourself evened out, and then you can start, you know, digging in with uh, removing, uh, just so you don't skate over the line. When you even it first. Pardon? When you. Uh even the face first before the joints? You could. I don't. It just saves time. But you could do that. Notice, once again, instead of doing the overhand cut, I'm doing underhand. Keep your arm on this side of the tool wrist.
make sure you get a nice hemispherical shape. Um, this could go a little steeper here, but I'm not going to mess with it because it's really not too bad. I still have to finish the bottom. What I have switched to in the last, I guess the last couple of years, is I, I got a bottom finishing gouge from uh, Doug Thompson. If you, if you can see, see the cut on this, this has a double bevel, whereas the, the lower bevel is a little more slanted. The, the cutting, the bevel up by the flute is flatter. These are great for this, this last 20% 20, 20 or so of bottom finishing on a bowl. How difficult is that to sharpen, though? With not hard. Okay. Not hard at all. And, and the nice thing is you're, you're only using it here for a little bit, so you don't have to sharpen it nearly as much as you do right. your regular standard bowl gap. But these, these are easy to sharpen. I just sharpen it by eye. That's not bad. I've got a, a few ridges right in here, and what I'll do, take my trusty scraper, nib right there that will come off with sanding this feels pretty good you know your scraper sharp if you can come off with shavings like that that's the way it should be Now we've got to do outside the line and the raised rim. See, I'm starting to get a curve here, but I'm flat out here where the corners are. So I haven't really cut much on that last half inch or so of the corner. So I've got to work on that just a little bit. This also is coming up here, so I've got to get a little deeper. Once you make full contact without not having abbreviated cut, it wants to push the gouge away from the wood. 
when you're into a solid cut. So just remember that you always, it'll always start to come up a little bit on you. So you have to change the angle of the cutting tip just a little bit. Notice I was kind of looking this way. I've got the light angled in such a way that I get a little bit of a shadow, and I can tell when I'm just about ready to make contact with these corners because they don't really show up very much. And you can see there's a lot of lines on there. You know, that's not exactly smooth. But this will come out very easily with sanding. Don't worry about it. And I don't mean a lot of sanding either because I don't like to sand. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to switch to my 3 8 fingernail gouge and finish this raised part here. I don't like to use the bigger gouge because it's it just it's too big. Now you've got your the raised rim. This needs to be a little bit smoother. I can do better than that. But I don't want to use the scraper. Do you ever want to shear scrape on something like that? The problem is, the question was, would I ever want to shear scrape? You can, but you've got to have very good tool control and don't, don't get the yips where you might, you know, push in. Um, because when you're out here making an abbreviated cut, you can get a snag that just scare the hell out of you sometimes. So I don't like to do too much out there like that. But but you you could you could do it you could do a, a, a shear scrape yeah. But this little bit that's left here, uh, it come off in two minutes of sanding with eighty or one hundred twenty grit. Not a big deal. Uh, you were using your hand on the top of the, the tool just now, as opposed to underneath. Here? Is there yes? Is there a reason? It's just uh, habitual. I I typically do cut this way when I'm doing just regular bowls and whatever. For this work, I should have had it underneath because it's kind of detail work and it's up close. And I'm not really taking a lot of wood. Uh, the main thing is just make sure you're comfortable with keeping your hands on this side of the tool rest. I can't, I can't accentuate that enough. Okay, um, basically, basically we're done. Uh, what I will do is leave this here. We can put it in the raffle, and if somebody wants to, they can finish it. I will leave the glue block on. I brought another uh, uh, bowl to show you how I take the glue box off and, and what, what you get. But this, this is basically a finished piece. All you got to do is a uh, little sanding. That's really all you need to do. My poor man's uh, poor man's Chuck. I think most of you have seen these. This is just Schedule 40 PVC pipe, three inch to two inch reducer. 
with some uh, clear vinyl uh, tubing that I've stuck on the outside to give it a soft, soft face to it. Makes a great chuck. Um, the uh, let's see. Yeah, what I need to do. We'll finish the bottom of this one. And what I'll do is take. Very simple. Take these off. Everybody see this? All well, you need this. This is an old broken down chisel. It's got the handle knocked off. <coughs> Orient the grain up and down. I just wedge a chisel in there. You got a nice clean cut. And I still have I still have a registration mark that I can put this on here and finish the bottom. But all it takes is just a blow with a chisel. <clears throat> I don't have a vacuum chuck. This this is what I use in lieu of a vacuum chuck. <laughs> What's that? Since you got good ears. <laughs> Yeah, we should have the club vacuum chuck up here for you. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Oops. What are you doing? That chisel was sharp. <laughs> <laughs> so sharp I didn't even know it. Band-aid. Okay, this is the way I finish <clears throat> the bottoms of mine. Whoops. Seems like tightening that up. Yeah. <laughs> Tends to make a little noise sometimes. Yeah, these are not lined up when that's happening. all there is to finishing the bottoms. A little sandpaper, I put a little decoration in there sometimes, two little grooves with a three-point tool. Anybody got a bandage? Yeah, we're getting one. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't mean to bleed all over there. Yeah. There it goes, one. <laughs> it's always super glue. It's always super glue. <laughs> My brother-in-law is a doctor, and he says you'd be surprised how many times super glue is used. It's great stuff, especially on the battlefield. There you go. You think I'm a better doctor? Okay, now we're set. That's what I get for using a chisel without a good hand on it. Anyway, um, I could. I could. I could also buy another chisel. Anyway, what you have left, what you have left, uh, you can sand this. Uh, is a little nub here, and what I do is uh, I put my. Uh, uh, Jacob's Chuck in the number two with a number two Forstner or uh, number two Morse taper on it and put it in here along with a small grinding disc and just yeah. hold it up there and grind this off. And then, and then I have a sanding, two inch sanding pad that I put in it too. And then that sands it. And, and that's basically a, an easy way to finish either bowl bottoms or any kind of a bottom on a piece if you don't have, if you don't have a, a vacuum chuck. I gave you a vacuum chuck. I know, I don't have it hooked up. <laughs> Where's the club's vacuum you will chuck? Fall in love with that. When you get it hooked up, you will just think, why didn't I do that? I know, I've used laser with vacuum chucks and I love them. <laughs> okay, that, that's it.
that is the end of what you want to show and see what you think. I talked to Roger about this earlier. Oh, yeah. These are some square bowls. That's a done deal. Um, yeah. I can do, I'm going to practice a little more because I haven't done too many of these, but I offered to Roger that next year, you know, fall, winter, whenever, uh, we could do a demo showing how to do these. Um, there's a guy down in North Carolina that's very good at these called Mark Gardner, and we, I know we, we you tried to get him up here. Uh, if you can get him up here, please do, because he's wonderful. But anyway, what these are is you wind up with bowls like this. So you've got turning this way, turning this way, and you've got turning this way. So I'll pass these around too just to look at them. But